Hello world, I'm Benjamin and this is Source Decoded. Do you want to be a programmer? Well, you can. Our not even kind of patented comprehensive operations for deep experience method provides you with three simple steps that are kind of easy to remember but actually really hard to implement that will guide you on your path to becoming an excellent software engineer. Step one, immerse yourself in good information. You need to find a good source of information and then just swim in it. Read, listen to, or watch the same things over and over and over, even if you don't understand it. With all this repetition, you will begin to piece out patterns and concepts, and it'll start to make sense. And even if you don't develop any great programming skills at this point, you will develop the important prerequisite skill of being able to find, read, and actually understand documentation. Maybe that doesn't sound very glamorous, but stick with it, because you're going to be doing that for the rest of your programming life. Where do you begin? It probably doesn't matter very much, but I suggest you start with something that interests you a lot because that will help you stay awake. And remember, you're not trying to learn C++ or JavaScript. You're learning to be a programmer, and you're going to pick up a language along the way. Step two, experiment with what you're studying. It's not enough to have a lot of information or even to memorize a really good book about programming. You have to actually work with the information and experiment with it. Experimenting with the things you study allows you to see how they work and how they fit together. And as we learn things, our brain compiles a bunch of related ideas into one idea and pushes it deeper into our understanding. When that happens, you begin to develop an intuitive sense for the concepts that you've learned, and those intuitions become the building blocks of new things. As you understand more and more, you'll be able to build more complex and interesting things. Remember, programming is not regurgitating a bunch of facts and figures, but it's creative, more like painting or composing music. Finally, step three, develop your bounded abstract problem solving skills. What's bounded abstract solving skills? Well, it's a term I just made up, but let me explain it this way. Imagine you had a truck and you have a sheep and you need to get the sheep into the truck. This is a concrete problem involving a specific sheep. To ask a more abstract question, you might say, not how do I get this sheep into the truck, but how do I get any sheep into the truck? This is a harder problem to solve because sheep come in different shapes and sizes, but the solution you design will be a lot more useful. That's abstract thinking. But why stop with sheep? Why not say, how do I get any animal into the truck? That's a great idea because you might want to carry goats and cows and chickens and other things. It's also going to be a harder problem to solve because pigs can be slippery and chickens are a lot smaller than cows and you're going to have to do something to keep the rabbits from jumping out. You can deal with all of that, but the really hard part is going to be figuring out how to get the elephants and whales into the truck. But wait, that's ridiculous. Why would you even put a whale into a truck? That's the bounded part of your bounded abstract problem solving skills. It seems like a silly idea, but I might be ashamed of the number of times I've tried to build something that was capable of putting a whale into a proverbial pickup truck. There's a real skill in knowing what kind of solutions are too concrete and limited in their use, or too abstract and just harder to build than they're worth. How do you develop these bounded abstract problem solving skills? Well, you practice. You solve lots of problems, and you solve them in lots of ways. Go out on the internet and find code challenges or invent your own and solve them, and then solve them again using a totally different paradigm. With all this experience, you'll be able to distinguish the difference between too concrete and too abstract. Along the way, you probably also want to develop the related skill of being able to argue with your coworkers about what you think is the right level of abstraction. But wait, you say, that sounds like work and that's going to take a lot of time. You're right, but I have a secret that can help make it take less time. Be more motivated and work harder. The amount of time it takes you to get good at programming or anything else is inversely proportional to how motivated you are to do it. How do you get more motivation? I really don't know, but I have seen people compress years of learning into mere months just on sheer grit and determination. On the other hand, I've seen smart people in a great learning environment with great information and real projects to practice on who didn't progress at all because they just weren't that interested. And remember this, learning a programming language does not make you a good programmer any more than learning English makes you a good poet. Sure, you can't write good English poetry without learning English first, and the best poets tend to have a good grasp of their language 
but a programming language is just a small piece of what you need. Finally, if you're the curious sort of person who wants to understand software better, subscribe to this channel and I'll share some of the things I've learned while I try and deepen my own understanding. Thank you for watching. You'll see me in the next video. Bye.